Before we begin, we'd like to mention that this episode of Muslim Mind has been brought to you by DC Muslim Youth and Adams Fairfax. So, thank you for joining us here today on the, on the podcast. Before we jump in, we have a uh, icebreaker question that is a little bit different from how we usually do. We usually have a list that the previous guest is asking from, but this is a special guest, uh, uh, Seth Saad Yaqub, and his question was, how many burgers is too many burgers? Wow, he picked a really good question. <laughs> Um, I think it depends on the size of the burger. Like if it's a small burger, also depends on how hungry I am. Mm. Sometimes if it's like a really it's big like, burger, say Ramadan, you know, oh, Ramadan you're, you're working hard like at MSA of stuff, you know, or end of Ramadan. I say middle because I feel like middle, middle. is kind of like the hardest in my opinion. One normal sized burger. What if I'm? What's normal? Is that oh, like wait. McDonald's or should is I, it like? Should I show like like that? Okay, <laughs> like that. That's like a um. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But then, like, I don't know. It depends. Sometimes I'll eat half a burger. And then if I'm really hungry, maybe I'll have two. Or one Fries? and a half. Oh, it's just, it just, just burger. Just burger. Just burger? Yeah. It's like, is there any topics you don't like? Or is it all just kind of like... No tomatoes. No tomatoes? No, actually, no, I agree I've with grown that. to like tomatoes a little bit more. Too slimy. But, yeah, the, t- the, the taste with the texture just yeah. doesn't work. But, yeah. Other than that, I think everything else is good. Great. So uh, as a tradition, at the end of the episode, you'll be asking the next guest the first question awesome. without knowing who it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and you don't have to come up with a question. It okay. can just be a question from the list. You just pick a number through 1 through 47. We'll go over at the end again. But essentially, that's going to be the first question, the icebreaker question for them, inshallah. But let's get started. Um, can you take us a l- tell us a little bit about your journey of why you decided to join the MSA? Not even just a leadership position, but like what kind of brought you into the MSA yeah. with Mason more specifically? Okay, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about before Mason, before I get to Mason. So I think, um, I initially started like MSA work, um, in my senior year of high school, I was on my MSA board and I was the event coordinator. So, I mean, MSA in high school is like at such a different scale than MSA at Mason, but I mean, actually the high schools are doing really good now. So I don't even know, maybe that's changed. They're, uh, um, they're, they're pulling themselves together. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen like so many, like group iftars and stuff. So it's really yeah. cool. Anyway, that was a tangent. Um, uh, they, or I was an event coordinator. And so I would like organize some of the meetings, some of the events that we had. And then that was high school. And actually when I graduated high school over the summer, I did work with some of the MSA board members oh, now really? and like people in the community. Yeah, yeah. We uh, volunteered at mass and we like organized this like really big talent night. And that was the biggest event that I had like ever. When was this? It was 2019. 2019, like yeah. early? Oh, the summer August 2019. 2019. August 2019. Yeah. So um, that was like the biggest event that I'd ever organized, but like that was really fun and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. But then when I came to Mason, I didn't really involve myself. Um, I The only MSA event I ever went to was Jamal. <laughs> like I did not go to MSA events like or anything. Year there? It was my first year, yeah. yeah. And then my first year was also in the middle COVID happened. Oh. And so we went online. Yeah. Um, But I remember at the end of the year when elections rolled around, one of my friends actually was interested in running for a board. So I nominated her. Yeah. Um, And then elections happened. She won. You know, it was all good. And then I remember getting a text a couple weeks later and it was like the sisters, the person who won the sisters coordinator position can't do it anymore. You received a nomination. Do you want to be on board? (laughs) And I was like, and I thought about it. I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. And it, there was like a mini election because there was someone else too. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, like, I won. Um, so I was sister's coordinator, which was basically one of the event coordinators. This was your second year? My sophomore year. Sophomore yeah. Year. And it was over Zoom in COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very interesting. Um, but at the end of the year, I received a nomination for president. And alhamdulillah, I've been president for Since then. the past two years. Yeah. That's, that's great. And you've graduated now and you've kind of like passed down the, the torch. Yes. Um, how's that been? How's that kind of like, how's that transition been for you? Like kind of leaving all that after two years of just like blood, sweat and tears. Because I've heard that running Mason's MSA is like, it's a full-time job at some, uh, for throughout sure. some yeah. like weeks and months of the, of the year. Yeah. So how's that transition been for you? Kind of like letting go of that. Uh, and yeah. Honestly, I think it's been easier than I thought. Really? Um, Like me and the vice president, Manar, we've been training the new president and vice president, Ali and Maryam. And so we've had like multiple training sessions with them. And they've been on board for, this is going to be both their third year. Mm -hmm. So they 
know what they're doing. Yeah. I'm really confident that inshallah, like, you know, the That's board good. is full of like so many passionate people. Yeah. They're all very excited. So I think inshallah, it'll be amazing. But for me, um, I'm like, wow, I can, you know, rediscover my hobbies or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to go a little bit into that. Why, um, what are you gonna, planning on doing now that you've left MSA? Like, are you still into the whole community work type thing or you to take like a little break, you know, rediscover yourself? Find find a law within yourself without all that like headache of like uh of like organizing events and things like that. Yeah. Like are you gonna keep going and like Inshallah, turning I'm, out events? I'm gonna take a little break for yeah. sure. Um, especially because like like I need time to reset mm. and then inshallah I'm gonna be working and inshallah I'm gonna do my masters yeah. too. So like it's just it's a lot to be yeah, doing yeah, yeah. at the same time. But I think I would like to do it again. Um I think it was alhamdulillah very fulfilling. And especially towards the end of my presidency where I've just heard from so many people about the positive effect yeah. that, alhamdulillah, I've had on their lives, but also MSA has had yeah. on their lives. I think that's that's so rewarding. So I would really love to do it again. Can you share some maybe of those stories that have like, that made you realize that what, you, what you've been doing for two years kind of like bore fruit in, in a sense and kind of like was worth it? Um, we don't have to say names or anything like that, of yeah, course, no. but just like any general stories. I kind of when I, when I asked that question, did anything come to mind <laughs> of like any specific situation? Um, general, like oh my god, you know, MSA has really yeah. had a positive effect. I found my friends through MSA. That's oh. like really generally. Um, one really specific one that I I heard very recently, and that's why I, it's like it really stuck with me is, um, how I've shown that, you know, I can how a leader can, and I'm not. Like, I'm saying this, I'm saying what the person said. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm, like, the perfect leader or anything like that at all. I definitely have made my fair share of mistakes. Uh, we all have. Um, but they said, you know, how a leader can can be in the community, and especially as a, like, as a, as a sister yeah. in the community. And this particular person told me, um, you know, being a person that a lot of sisters can look up to because, I mean, anyone can do community work. Yeah. Um, it's not like there is male or female for that. So that's like the one that I've heard most recently. And it really stuck with me because the person was also like very emotional when they were telling me that. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh my God, that's, that was so amazing. That yeah, was so yeah. sweet. I actually want yeah. to go a little bit deeper into that. It's with like you being a, a female leader in the mm -hmm. community. How has that been? Like, what are some challenges you face? Because there's a lot of people, I believe, that are out there that wouldn't really accept that. And then we're, how do I say this? They don't really, uh, view you as a leader or as a good leader because you are a sister in, in such a like position of power. Mm -hmm. How was that like? What are some challenges you faced with that? Um and how have you overcome them eventually? I know you said you didn't like the the Yeah. <laughs> we can we can we can cut I'm this out. To, like actually yeah. think of challenges. I mean I've I don't know if I want this to be in here. I don't okay. know. You can, tell, you fine. tell me if it's controversial. She'll 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 censor me. <laughs> But um, I've definitely, like, heard, you know, various opinions about, mm -hmm. oh, you know, why is a girl shouldn't be in a yeah, leadership yeah, yeah. position? Like, there are definitely people who think that way. And I actually, when I was sisters coordinator, I was like, I don't think it should be me. Um, but alhamdulillah, and this is something that someone else told me, um, I've really shown that it doesn't, like, the president doesn't, for example, the president doesn't have to be, you know, a brother. Yeah, there are certain things that, for example, after like Salah, yeah. um, you know, typically a guy goes up and does announcements because we're on different sides in the Musala yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, but really that just kind of comes down to how you allocate tasks to mm -hmm. people. And I feel like anyone can allocate tasks. You'll um, be surprised. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Delegating is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's tough for many people being mm -hmm. able to delegate and like kind of not do the work and like allow other people to do the work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kind of have that like the, the trust issue is like, oh, like, they're not going to do it properly. Oh, I'm just going to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the fact that you're like, you're kind of just o open with that. And you're like, you're yeah. able to delegate actually. That's yeah. like. So Alhamdulillah, I think that's been my biggest help. Though. Yeah. Um, because like, there are there are certain things that I know I, I have limitations that I mm -hmm. can't do. But it's just, you know, delegating it to the brothers who can, yeah. for example. And I think that's, I mean, Alhamdulillah, the board has all been very, very supportive and mm -hmm. very receptive. And. Everyone says, oh, my God, Jimmy, you say amazing. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. the president. And it's like, yeah, I'm the president. But if it wasn't for each and every single one of the other board members, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of this would have been possible. Yeah, 
you guys have a beautiful team, 10 people at all times. It was like, it makes all the other MSAs in the area look like small compared to you guys. But no, mashallah, you guys have done amazing work with the Night of Light specifically, because that's like one of the events that I, I, I remember going to. And that was, I was surprised, like an MSA pulled this off. And like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that it was, was just, like one of the biggest events we yeah, have yeah, yeah. ever had. The one in the fall as well, right? Yes, both the fall and the spring one. Yeah. yeah. So that I was, was able to make the spring one. The no, board, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. You guys really do amazing work. Um, but no, give your, you got to give yourself some props. Like you, there's, there needs to be someone who, without having a good leader in, in place, a lot of stuff kind of, things kind of fall apart. You, you know, you, you should pat yourself on the back for that, that you, Michelle, you've done great work and in leading and, and organizing and all that type of stuff. Definitely a huge shout out to my vice president, Manar, because like, um, you know, and we say like president, vice president, but we really acted as like co-presidents. Yeah. And there were so many times where like something would be happening. And if it was like the tiniest thing, we'd like hop on call and be like, yeah. how do we fix this? How do we solve it? What's the solution? Yeah, yeah. You know, what do we give to who and all that? So alhamdulillah, the two of us were really able to to kind of work together on that. Yeah. When um, now that you're looking back at like these past two years, what's something that you're like, you just remember that like, oh, that was that's very memorable. That just kind of you, you, like no matter how many years go past, that's just gonna stick with you. You have a memory like that? No, <laughs> two years. Um, there's you know there's what? Some people there will be are, very upset about this. <laughs> there are so many <laughs> memories. Yeah. Um. Also, actually, Good people will tell me that I have not the best memory, or I have like very selective memory. Yeah. I'll remember super like specific things that are not important. Yeah. But then other things, I'll have to like go look at my pictures and that's when I remember things. So, um, alhamdulillah, I think there were just so many good memories. Like even the little mundane things like yeah. setting up for events with the board or um, if we were getting lunch with the sisters mm -hmm. after Juma, stuff like that. Like all those little things, there was joy in alhamdulillah each and every single one of those yeah. moments. So I don't think I can just pick one yeah, because yeah. it was like the combination of all of those things together that really... I mean, that truly made my experience. That's, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I, I understand that, yeah. Um, what, how was it like balancing your, your, now that you've graduated, how was it like balancing your coursework and, and college and, like, other aspects of your life with MSA? Because, like I mentioned, that, like, you guys were working hard to pull some yeah. of the stuff you guys pulled off. Oh, yeah. But, like, how was, <laughs> how was that, I don't want to say work-life balance because you weren't getting paid for the MSA, but how was that balance <laughs> of, like, college and and msa and like your personal life and friends and all that type of stuff um it was definitely difficult like it was not easy um but alhamdulillah it was a uh, shout out to my mom um <laughs> because it was a skill that she had taught me really young i'd see her like when i was little like writing in her planner mm -hmm. these are the things i got to do today and so like growing up i was i would do like extracurricular yeah. activities in school and so um that's something that I would do. And um, like, I think the the biggest thing is just having a way to keep yourself organized and yeah. know all the things you need to do. So some type of way to keep track of your tasks. Um, I know myself and so many of the other board members do this where we like either use a planner or like there's an app called Notion yeah. or a calendar. You right have now. it? Yeah, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or like there, the calendar app, like blocking off yeah, times yeah. on your calendar. Um, but yeah, um, we really rely on those tools to kind of keep ourselves organized. And I think also something else is learning when to say no, because mm. there are so many things that we all want to do. And I think one of the most important things is as we're doing all these things, we also need to remember ourselves yeah. and take time for ourselves. And if we don't take a break, eventually and I've this has happened to me so many times our bodies and our minds will force us to yeah. take a break and then it's not fun yeah, yeah, yeah. so um like an example I I was like last year doing MSA school I was also like tutoring mm. and then um I saw like an opportunity for another tutoring job and I was like that would be really cool like I would yeah. love to do that and then I was like if I do that I don't think I would be able to do all of it yeah, yeah. so I literally had to say no um because I, I wanted to kind of have that time for myself. Yeah, and course. even then with with everything, it was still really difficult yeah, to have yeah. time for myself. I'd be like in class multitasking like MSA stuff and then also oh, wow. like listening to yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
it was definitely a full time job. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but alhamdulillah, you, you, again, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but you guys really did good work and okay. mashallah. Um, where do you see MSA going? Not G, like GMU MSA a little bit, and we can talk more like generally, like where do you see like MSAs as a whole going, going more into like high school, but we'll start with GMU. Where do you see a GMU MSA going? Alhamdulillah, I think already it's going in a, in a really great direction. I've over the course of the past two years heard a lot of really great mm-hmm. feedback. Um, going back to like kind of the, the purposes of MSA, um, there are a couple of really foundational ones. The first one being to create that Islamic environment on campus, to foster brotherhood and sisterhood among Muslims. And then the second one being to provide the resources for our community to grow in their knowledge of Islam. And so I think, alhamdulillah, we've we've been doing that through like the different combination of events that we've been having. We have like lectures, classes, um, socials and discussion circles, yeah. stuff like that. So I really think kind of continuing with that um, would be really great. I also think, and this is like one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about MSA is that- Actually, one of my questions, so oh, you're right on. Am I, am I jumping in? No, I'm not jumping ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's that you have to have a certain level of religiousness mm. to be part of MSA and to come to events. And like, that's not true at all. Um, none of us are perfect Muslims. Even like the board, I yeah. know like sometimes some people are like, oh my God, MSA president, like you don't know this. And I'm like, no, none of us have like that knowledge. We're not perfect. Yeah, we're just yeah. like, we're humans, just like, just like you. Um, and so it's through those, going back to the purpose of MSA, um, it's through those brotherly and sisterly bonds that like people can form those good friendships. Yeah. And then that can encourage each other to become better Muslims. Um, there's that hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, a man follows the religion of his friend, so each one should consider whom he makes his friend. Um, and so... Oh, and so I really hope that the direction that GMU MSA kind of goes into in the future is bringing in those people yeah. who really feel like they don't belong in MSA. You know, MSA is not an exclusive club yeah. for the religious. Um, it's it's a club for everyone, Muslim and non-Muslim. It's for everyone who wants to become better Muslims. And we can become better Muslims through our strong community, through coming to lectures and classes and, and learning about Islam. And yeah. not even MSA events. Like, when you have those friendships, you can encourage each other to go to local masajid, the classes that they have. Yeah. So many masajid in the area have, like, weekly halaqat and stuff like that. So um, just kind of strengthening that community. I hope that that's the direction that MSA goes in. Yeah. You see that for just GMU or do you think that's the case for high school as well? I think, I think high, school. high school is a little bit different. I think maybe now they're kind of like pivoting to that college mindset, but mm-hmm. high school is kind of, it's a bit different because it's not the same scale. People in high school are just kind of like, oh, high school is like, we'll figure it out in college. But yeah. like, what do you think of, of that more specifically? Um. Thinking back to when I was in high school, uh, I mean, it would be amazing if like high schools could could go into that direction yeah. where like the Muslim community in a high school is so strong. Um, I think that would be really good because at the end of the day, you know, all of our deeds are counting, whether we're yeah. in high school or in college. And and it would be really nice to kind of have those good friendships from high school from when you're young mm-hmm. that can, you know, you can inter- encourage each other to do good and remind yeah. each other to stay away from bad. Um, so I really hope that high schools move in that direction, too. I don't know how easy or difficult it would be. Yeah. I don't know anything about high school now. Um, it, was, it was like you four just years graduated ago. College, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, that would be amazing for high school, for any other MSA, honestly, because like at the end of the day, we're surrounded by so much fitna in yeah. the world. and. And, you know, on college campuses, we're often the minority. And so it's those good friendships that we need to lean on in those times of difficulty. What do you say to those? Let me, uh, so this can, this can, this might get cut out if you don't want to answer it. But um, what do you think of people who say MSA is not the Muslim Student Association, but the Marriage Student Association? (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, I think... That, well, first of all, I think that MSA offers so much more than that. Yeah. Um, I, I do understand that some people 
um, will come to an MSA event with that intention. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because at the end of the day, if you want to find a good spouse, um, where are you going to find them? You know, like, yeah. like I think if there's someone who's coming to MSA events and they're passionate about their dean and you're also passionate about their dean and you want to find a good, highest spouse, um, that could be a great place to find them. Obviously, don't be acting creepy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, like, I, I don't see any shame in that. And I don't think people should shame others for that because there are so many people who, you know, meet their spouses through MSA. Yeah. Um, but... MSA also does offer so much more than just that. So course, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. call it just marriage student yeah, association. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm saying some people do that just yeah. because they kind of No, I've like, heard it. They look outside <laughs> in and they just kind of like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people kind of have that misconception, again, going back to the misconception part, that MSA is kind of like, not even for those, it's like, some people think MSA is too open in that sense where it's like, oh, you don't have to be like a certain level of religious, religious, What's the word? Religiosity. Maybe? Re yeah, okay. religiosity. <laughs> um, to be part of the MSA, and I think that's like completely not true because mm -hmm. when you're in college, there is so much around you, and being around people who have those same beliefs as you, kind of like the best way of like staying true to your faith and staying true to who we are as Muslims. And I think people sometimes are are afraid of kind of like accepting that part of them, where they're like, "Oh, I'm not going to go to like MSA just because you know." Oh, all the stuff happens at MSA when, in re like, in reality, that's just simply not true. And we're all on our different journeys as Muslimin. You know, our faith, it goes up and down. Yeah. I mean, the hope is that the general trend is upwards. Yeah. But there will be times where it's stronger and where it's weaker. And so you can't really judge anyone for being, you know, at maybe not at the point where you are yeah. or um, anything like that. Um, because, and there's something else. I can't think of the exact source or anything like that. But, um... Like to look at people who are better than you because then and make friends who are, you know, who you see as better Muslim yeah. than you, because then that can encourage you that good, friendly, like competition, encourage you to compete in good deeds yeah. and to do well. And so if you don't, you know, surround yourself with people like that, then there's also not really much room for growth. So that's just something else. Being a leader in the community comes with its own challenges and responsibilities. How has your experience been like? Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on the positive because actually when I was like, like thinking about this, there yeah. were so many positive things that I was thinking about and I was yeah. like, like, wow. Um, so Alhamdulillah, my experience with MSA is, this sounds so cliche, but it's been really life changing. Uh -huh. Um, like Alhamdulillah, I've so grown so much in my faith. I've grown so much in my knowledge yeah. of Islam. Um, I've met so many amazing people and made so many good friends, the, the type of friends you, you remind each other to yeah. do good, stay away from bad. Um, even in like my professional life, like it's been a really huge growing experience because I've learned how to work with people who have so many different ideas and experiences than myself. Um, and Alhamdulillah, it's just been a constant growing mm -hmm. experience for me in, in all aspects. And I know that like, I'm not the same person that I was three years ago, a year ago, or even six months ago. Like yeah. it's just a constant, constant growth. Alhamdulillah. You're going to be the same person in, in another year or two years. Yeah, inshallah, so hopefully better. Better, yeah, yeah. yeah of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but subhanAllah, as I as I talk about my experience, it reminds me of that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it may be that you dislike a thing while it is good for you. Um, and then he also says, and it may be that you um, like something, but it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Not saying I disliked MSA, um, but uh, going back to like earlier, it wasn't something that I wanted to do at that point yeah. in my college journey. Um, and I remember when my friend was trying to run for a board, I was like, maybe I'll do it in a couple of years, yeah, maybe two yeah. years, a year, you know, not now. Um, but subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated that for me. And looking back, I know that alhamdulillah, it was like truly the best thing for me uh, in all aspects. Yeah. And to go off on like a little tangent, um, because having strong tawakkul is something that I struggle with and I know a lot of people struggle with um, reflecting back on this like positive experience really helps me remember that like while we make plans Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own plan his he's plan is gonna happen and he's the best of players yeah. yeah and so this is you know as I'm talking this is like a huge yeah, yeah. reminder to myself first and foremost but hopefully to everyone listening as yeah. well that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us 
so many times, like in our life, I mean, everything is a blessing, obviously, but there's so many times where we can reflect and look back on and remember that he's blessed us with these things and his like plan has worked out so yeah. beautifully. Um, so inshallah, by reflecting on that, and I got to like go home and do some reflection. Like when I was thinking about this, I was yeah. like, <laughs> um, so hopefully that can help us kind of become a little more grateful and yeah. help us strengthen our toe good. Of course, yeah, no, honestly, even though I am like 18, this kind of, that, that kind of reflection has, like I've been thinking about it a lot uh, lately with like, there's a lot that goes good in our lives that we just kind of move past. And then when we're like stopped in, in our tracks with something bad or something that we didn't expect, kind of just, it kind of has you reflecting on like, oh, how do you react to something like this? Mm -hmm. Because no matter what happens, there's always going to be hardships and there's always going to be difficulties. And like Ossad Saad was saying in the previous episode that he, it's building you to kind of be ready for the pain where the pain is going to come regardless and the, and the hardship is going to come regardless, but building yourself in a way that you are ready for it and you know how to deal with it and you know how to fall, but still get back up. Exactly. Yeah. So, Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for those who are interested in, in, in being more involved with the MSA? Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that before I was on board, the only events I went to were Jama. Yeah. That was partially because of, um, like I had scheduled conflicts, obviously. Mm -hmm. Another part of the reason was none of my friends are going, so mm -hmm. I don't really want to go. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. don't know anyone. Um, and that's something that like over the course of the past three years, it's something that I've been hearing mm -hmm. um, that, you know, people kind of are nervous, especially when MSA seems like a friend group. Yeah. It seems like everybody knows each other. It's a click. It's a click. Ex yeah. That's the exact word I've been hearing. Um, and having been in that position for a short amount of time, I know that it's like super scary. Mm. And like, again, that's the reason why I literally didn't go to MSA. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a fake MSA board member. I did not go to MSA events. Um, but for this, my advice would be that you're biggest resource is the MSA board. Um, talking specifically about GMU MSA's board, yeah. because I, kn I know that's what we do. Yeah. But I'm sure that like any other school's board would do the same. And for us, it's, I know it's super scary, but like just taking that first step and approaching a board member, because the board members are here to support you, to yeah. help you through whatever you need. Um, and just kind of reaching out to a board member and being like, Sanam, I'm, I really want to come to an MSA event, but yeah. I don't know anyone. And I'm really nervous because I know that we've done that. We've taken those steps to welcome that person yeah. and introduce them to other members. I know there are some more outgoing people who will just straight up like go to members and be like, hey, you know, do you want to like, yeah, my yeah. name's this. Can we, you know, let's be friends, stuff yeah. like that. that. We have in our like sisters discord channel, like there are sisters who I don't think they know each other. Yeah. I don't know if they know each other or not. But they're like trying to make plans to go to like cafes and stuff oh, wow. like and they're just messaging in, yeah, in the group yeah. chat. Um, and so like just kind of taking that small first step. I know it's so scary. And if yeah. you don't want to approach a random like member, that's totally fine. But definitely the board is your biggest resource mm -hmm. um, because that's what we're here for. Yeah. Honestly, I have an experience exactly like that. When I first went to Nova, I really wanted to get involved with the MSA, whether it just be to events. So I just, I reached out to them on Instagram and then they gave me the link to the group chat. I joined the WhatsApp group chat. I saw who was leading it. And I just sent them a message. I'm like, hey, I want to get more involved. When's your first event? Things like that. And through there, now I'm very involved with the Nova MSA. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, like Allah. I've taken a position in leadership. But no, Alhamdulillah, like taking that first step really yeah. is the... It's so scary. Yeah. And I, I know it's scary. But like, even if you don't know the board member, literally yeah. send them a message on Instagram, send them a message and send the MSA account and message, yeah. like anything like that. You just have to take that tiny step because otherwise we don't know. Yeah. And like, then we can't really help. But if we do know, we're going to do our, our best to help. Yeah, people. of course. That's, yeah. that's great. Um, as we wrap up, I just want to go a little bit more on your relationship with Allah and how that's been um, separate from MSA. Just you, your, your one-on-one -on -one with Allah, you know, when everyone's sleeping and you're like, you know, praying to Hajjud, how has that relationship kind of evolved and grown? Um, Alhamdulillah, I think, you know, as I, as I said before, I'm definitely not the, the same person that I was, you know, when I was in high school or even yeah. like a freshman in college. Alhamdulillah, I've, I've grown a lot in my deen. Um, when it comes specifically to MSA, everything's related to MSA. My, my, I'm just a walking MSA advertisement. Um, 
But I think that when it comes to your relationship with a lot and being on board and kind of, you know, having to navigate all of that, um, I think everyone on board agrees that when you're serving the community to the extent that we are, it's sometimes really hard to focus on your relationship with yeah. Allah Subhanahu um, like there are so many times where I've just been so mentally and physically exhausted. Here's a, here's a really good example. Um, during Ramadan, when we have iftars at mm-hmm. Mason, you know, oftentimes we're cleaning up and then we'll either be late to Aisha or Tarawih or sometimes mm-hmm. we can't even go. Yeah. And I really think that for that, and this is something that one of my board members actually brought up. All you need is just a perspective shift yeah. and that can really change everything. Um, instead of, you know, thinking negatively about that, um, uh, obviously there's so much reward in praying at night yeah. in Jama'a, especially in Ramadan, not saying don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely try to do that if you can, but there's also so much reward in feeding fasting people in yeah. Ramadan, feeding a hundred fasting people. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so much reward right there. And so... Um, and so, like, I've seen so many different versions of that during Ramadan, mm-hmm. like, just have a perspective shift um, and, you know, change your intention. And if you shift your intention to be for something that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you'll be rewarded, inshallah, because yeah. so many things in our everyday lives we can be rewarded for yeah. if we do it for the right intention. So I think part of part of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that, because when you then set your intention each time, you, you're also reminded of Him. Yeah. And that in itself is kind of building that relationship with him. And then speaking of intention, the other part of it is that when you're in such a like public, I want to say public figure, yeah, public position, um, and you're doing community work, there's often a lot of praise. Yeah. And obviously praise is not a bad thing. Like, you know, who doesn't want to hear praise? But it really messes with your intention sometimes. Mm. And that's something that like, like we would always begin our board meetings with a little intention check. Yeah, yeah. Because... Um, you don't want to be doing, you know, all this work to be pleasing the people. You want to be doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And so for those things, um, a piece of advice that I was given is to have one thing that you do consistently and privately, whether that be like a really in-depth study of the Quran or um, a really in-depth study of the Quran or you know, taking a class, something that can just kind of keep you grounded and you're doing for yourself mm-hmm. and that will constantly keep you tied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it really just, the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though, and I'm sure like I'm a, people are super busy with stuff that yeah. goes on in their lives. Like I know that for me, it was the case with MSA for someone else. It could be their job yeah. or their school or, you know, anything else that they have to take care of. But family. Family, exactly. And so as long as you set your intention and do it for the sake of Allah, you can be rewarded for so many little things that you yeah. do on an every, everyday basis and make sure that your intention is good. First and foremost, reminder for myself, because that's something that I definitely struggled with a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the key to, key to it all, inshallah. Yeah, it's, been, it's, been a great, it's been a great time having you here. Thank you for being here and uh, sharing all these experiences and, and advice to our listeners. If the listeners didn't learn anything, I know I have, so thank you for that. Um, I will definitely be implementing some of those things in my leadership with, with MSA at Nova. Maybe not right. Mason. That one, no, y'all, you y'all should work do too, Mason. Y'all work too much. I don't know about <laughs> that. But no, if it's if, if it's meant to be, it will, it will happen. If it's not, then Allah, Allah knows best. Mm-hmm. But uh, as the tradition goes, we have you pick the next question for the next guest without knowing who it is. You don't have to come up with a question like Ustad Zad. But you can pick a number between 1 and 47. Some of them are deeper. Some of them are more lighthearted. Um, and yeah, just any number and then, yeah. Um, a lot of pressure. Well, for, yeah, it is. Well, first I'll say, uh, Jazakallah khair for having me. I'm really honored. Uh, I, when, when I heard the lineup of yeah. all the other speakers, I did not feel qualified at <laughs> all. Um, so I'm really honored and anything I said was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything yeah. that I said, anything that I said correctly was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that I said incorrectly was from myself. Um, as for the question... 24. So the question is, what's the best piece of advice you've ever given? Whoa. So, yeah. That's a really deep question. The that next is person gonna be... is going to have to think a lot. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad yeah. I didn't get that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually, I, I should probably prep them before, but before oh, yeah. I just, they can have some time to think about it. Yeah. But yeah, no, 
Thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for new po- episodes of the Muslim Minds podcast every Thursday at five, inshallah. See you guys next week to see who the next guest is and how they reply to this question. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you're enjoying Muslim Minds so far and you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe. Whether it be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other platform you're listening to, take a moment to subscribe. We'll remind you when we upload episodes so you never miss an episode of Muslim Minds again. So take a moment, hit subscribe, and thank you for listening.